Victor wants to know about how to assess an idea. I'm David C. Barnett, and you're tuned in to Small Business and Deal Making, the broadcast, podcast, YouTube channel where I talk about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium sized businesses while controlling risk. So, if you're looking to take control of your future through buying a business one day, or if you already own a business and you're looking to grow or exit, you've come to the right place. I talk about interesting things, I talk to interesting people, and I answer your questions every week right here. So, be sure to hit like. Be sure to hit subscribe and let's get to it. All right, Victor sent in a question. Uh, thanks, Victor. How do you evaluate a business idea and assess whether or not it's viable? Great idea. So, you know, you didn't specifically mention buying a business, so I'm gonna I'm gonna broaden this out to include starting a business as well. So, the very first question I ask whenever somebody mentions that they want to start a business or, or get into business in some way is I'll ask, is this a new and original thing or a tried and true thing? So somebody who's got this new idea for this new solution, um, if it's if it's a completely new thing, then that's a whole world of, you know, sort of your startup venture capital entrepreneur type of thing. If it's something new and original, that immediately puts it into the category of speculative for me. Because we don't know if a business like that has ever worked before. It is, is completely new. Compare that with a shoe store, right? Shoe stores exist everywhere. And we know that if you offer shoes people wanna buy, then you know you can make money selling shoes. So that would be the, the second one, is it tried and true? So that would be my first question. Is it new and original or is it tried and true? If it's a tried and true thing, then the next question is going to be, are we able to replicate every aspect of the customer experience that the customer is going to want going through that journey with us? And, and I think that a lot of people really drop the ball on this one. So let me give you an example. Um, shoe store again. So a lot of people will think that the success or failure of a shoe store is based upon having, you know, the shoes that people find fashionable or desirable or comfortable or what have you, right? And they'll focus on the product. And it's not always about the product. Sometimes it's about the experience when somebody goes through the door and what happens when they're in the store. And sometimes it has to do with the purchasing experience. So, so let me give you an example. Um, you know, back when I used to travel for business all the time, um, I had an American Express corporate card for my expenses. And sometimes I'd be in a small town and I would go somewhere and I, I would ask a restaurant person right at the front when, I were, when I'm gonna come in, I'm like, do you take American Express? And if they said yes, I would sit down and I would eat. And if they said no, I would say, oh, and I would leave. And you know, this one lady, this one um, uh, greeter once said, well, don't you have another way to pay? And I said, sure, but then I'd have to spend my own money and then I have to keep the receipt and then I have to file an expense claim and then I have to wait a month for the, you know, the um, expense department at the company to like mail me a check or something. I said, why would I spend my own money on supper and wait to get reimbursed when I could just use this card they gave me, right? And so that restaurant could have had the best food in town but because they fell down on another aspect of the customer experience, I wasn't going to shop there. I wasn't going to buy my meal there. And, and I said, I said to her, I said, if you want to get more business travelers, you should start accepting American Express. And what she said to me was, well, we don't get many business people in here. Right? Duh. Anyway, so, um, so that's what I mean about customer experience. What are they looking for? So, you know, you could have, for example, a motel. And across the street from you could be a motel with a commonly recognized brand. And with those brands usually come some kind of reward program for frequent guests, right? Um, I can tell you that I've arrived in places when traveling on the highway and there's a branded property and an unbranded property and the branded one is full and the other one is not. It's not just about the franchise brand. It's also about the perception of value that someone is going to be getting something from making that decision. Let's get back to corporate travel again, because I used to see this all the time, where an individual who is traveling, let's say, um, you know, the company's picking up the tab for the hotel room, 
but who gets the points for staying there? Me. And so if there are two hotels of equivalent, you know, comfort and amenity, and one of them is $140 and they're going to give me points that I can use towards a free stay on my vacation someday. And the other one is $30 cheaper, but there's no points. Which one am I going to choose? Well, I'm going to stay at the place where I earn the points because as a decision maker, I've been incentivized to make that purchasing decision over the other one. So for the hotelier, there's value in being associated with those with those capacities of the customer experience that aren't related to you know, how fluffy the pillows are or how good the breakfast is the next morning. And, and this is, you know, a lot of people, when they get into business, they're focused so much on the product that they don't think about the overall experience. And so that's another aspect that has to be imagined through. And you, and it's very difficult because everyone wants to project their own biases on the situation. So somebody who is always, you know, choosing the lowest priced option, they may not understand that someone else applies a value to some other aspect. You know, I've, I've got a friend who will only stay in hotels that have hot tubs, right? That's something that they are keenly interested in. They like that experience. That's what they look for when they go looking for a hotel. Other people are going to have other things that they're, that they're interested in. So you have to try to observe. So if you were going to open a shoe store and there's another shoe store around, you need to get an idea of who's going through the door. What are they looking for? What is driving them? What are their motivations? And of course, different shoe stores are going to attract different types of clients. You know, your fancy expensive shoes are going to attract one type of client. And the place that guarantees the lowest price is going to attract a different kind of client. So once we've evaluated the customer experience and we're certain that we're able to deliver on all of the things that the potential clients are going to be looking for, the next question that I think is a great one to ask is if you say, if I went through with this today, and this can be applied to starting a new business or buying a business, and I fail within the first year, what will the likely cause have been? So now you're trying to retrospectively examine the reason why the business failed from some point of view in the future. So you look at the business idea, you look at the numbers, Something like a cash flow forecast is going to be critical for doing this. If you want to learn how to make a cash flow forecast, head over to bizplanschool.com. I explain there a whole program that where you can learn how to make a cash flow forecast and a set of financials and a business plan for either a business acquisition or a new startup. But you want to then retrospectively look and say, what, what will be the problems? What will be the reason for the failure? When you're buying an existing business, you've already got customers, you've already got the product, you've already got the staff, you've already got the location, you've already got the branding. Like what will have gone wrong? It usually will have to do with the terms of your purchase. Either you've committed too much of cash flow towards debt service or some other aspect of the terms means that um, if there's a dip in revenue and the profits go down, you can't make it because of you know the, the fact that you were overextended in your deal making other than like crazy unforeseen events like global pandemics, for example. Um, if you're starting a new business, then you might be having that retrospective question answered with things like we didn't get enough customers fast enough. We weren't able to protect our margins. We ended up doing things that, you know, were contra to our, to our best interests because we couldn't make enough sales. Or it could be the other whole, you know, sort of field of things to do with business. Like we couldn't get enough good employees. We had to cut our hours because we couldn't get enough staff, things of that nature. So when you start to think about what are the likely reasons we would have failed, it better you're better able to prepare and to work those particular concerns into your plan. Anyway, Victor, it's a great question. I want to thank you very much for sending it in. And I hope that I did a great job of answering it. Let me know in the comments down below. If, um, if you guys have any other ideas of how you can assess whether or not a business is viable or not. And uh, with that, we'll see you next time. Cheers. So how can you learn more about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium-sized businesses? Easy. Head over to my blog site, davidcbarnett.com, where you can learn more about me, learn how I work with my clients. You can learn about my books, courses that I prepared for you. You can also find out all about how to subscribe to my email list, the YouTube playlists, etc. There's literally 
hundreds of hours of content there all for free. And I'd love for you to be my guest.